my inner. Oh, uh, actually, I need to get fun now. I need to get. Today's video is going to be in my talk series or just a chit chat of going off the last one I did which was my gap year video. If you haven't checked out that video yet then please check it out because it's very informative and I just talk about my gap year, certain experiences I had and some tips I have for any of you going on one or just any of you that want to reflect on one you've gone on. But yeah and I spoke a bit about my part-time jobs and things I did and I did mention that I got fired from one of my jobs I mean my only job so yeah I just wanted to do a story time video of what led to that build up of me getting fired but also because I haven't actually ate today even though it's like nearly evening I don't know why I've been feeling a bit up and down I just want to eat also as I talk to you guys Let's get comfy, let's have some Philadelphia and some breads. And yeah. And also I wanted to say, because my last video, talk video, my gap year one, got actually a lot of a lot of views compared to my other videos. It got the it's my second most viewed video. So I just wanted to say thank you so much for the support because yeah, I haven't been doing this YouTube stuff for that long now but just want to say thank you for all the love all the support I'm gonna try and keep this video as short as possible because we're only nearly two minutes in because I know my last one was a bit of a long and long again <laughs> it was a bit long compared to this one but yeah I'm trying I'm gonna try and speak as quick as I can also let's just hope my phone doesn't play up on me because it keeps saying stuff about storage and stuff so let's hope it doesn't run out during this video let's just pray pray to the lord almighty <laughs> and yeah um i will tell you first how i got the job so there's this organization company whatever you want to call them called the princess trust and they help young people get experience get opportunities get gain more access into jobs and yeah they just help because sometimes it can be hard especially if you're someone who's in like sixth form or you're someone who's in school to find jobs or that a lot of companies say they want someone with experience but then say if you've never had any had a job anymore how do you get that experience so yeah they had this event called get hired which basically allows you to meet employers on the day and have you get to choose i think like four or three um and they kind of have an informal interview kind of chat style with you they decide after that who they're going to choose to you know um work for them or to go on to a, the next stage of having another interview and I like that because it's like you know sometimes it's I feel like CVs in a sense are outdated I feel like that allowed you know different methods to employers giving someone a chance which they may just turn down their CV for like allows you to meet the person and bring out their personality because I'm sure if I applied to most of those jobs online by myself at the time I probably wouldn't have got them 
but this event and this organization really helps support young people and yeah just a quick plug so i'll link them below so yeah that's how i got the job i went to this event it was a day of, at the time i wanted to go in well i was going in to study fashion a lot of fashion people or people in the fashion industry they say you know to get an insight into the industry that you should gain um, experience in a customer facing role customer service and you know fashion retail is a good way so then i thought okay let me try and get a job in fashion retail so gap was the only company at the time that the only company at the event that was a fashion retail company but yeah so in my head i knew as soon as we got the list of what companies were coming to this event i was like gap is the one that i'm striving for you know i'd done the interview everything went well and then it was you know the waiting game i think they said you would hear in around a week if you got the job or not and or if they want to interview you again and i was like please gap, that's what one i want they asked me questions like so to tell us about your style what are you wearing today? The reason, the things I was wearing, I was, I dressed smart because obviously dressed to impress. It wasn't my personal style. I mean, relevant to me at that present moment in time, it just been. But anyways, past that, I was like, I always still had it in my head that I really wanted this job. So I just carried on. I didn't have to sit. Carried on pursuing that. So yeah, let's just flash forward. I got the interview, the second interview. This interview was on the shop floor. It was the most awkward interview I've ever had. And because I was so keen, I was like 40 minutes early. I did the interview on the shop floor. It was like whilst people were shopping, it was right next to one of the rails. It was really awkward because it was like people were, you know, obviously hearing. Not that I would care too much, but it was like, can't we go in the back room and sit down and have a chat? We're literally standing on the shop floor but I kind of understood because they got me to do tasks after like oh um find an outfit like this for this kind of person they gave me a scenario and then they made me find outfits to do with it but then I was like my role is a sales assistant not a fashion stylist let's just fall into the job you know oh yeah I got the job after that interview I was really happy really excited got the job and everything was going well um i think because i didn't work a retail role for so long and also because compared to nike gap was outdated in the style in the way they did things as a, with the sales assistants like for example nike was very like the customer service was very like digital based gap was um a bit more so because I didn't I wasn't experienced in that way I didn't know what to do I was like and then I would ask for help when you know they always say you know if you're stuck with something we want honesty we want you to ask for help that's what the guy was the guy who did my interview he is another case for another day but yeah he when I first met him he seemed really nice really kind but as soon as I got on the shop floor he was the opposite he was like do this do that and i know obviously retail is a fast-paced environment so bear that in mind if any of you guys ever want to work in retail but yeah and there was a lot of things i struggled to adapt to because i've never done things like that before it just took me maybe longer than other people and i didn't have a job for a while like i was earning money from doing other things nothing illegal <laughs> like i was doing a lot of focus groups with this creative company and helping them with projects and that was you know giving me a little bit of money at a time but it wasn't like a part-time job or any contracted thing so yeah I just really enjoyed doing that but then I was like let me get more set job just for now so I can save up a little before I start uni and just give myself something to do because I literally at that point I'd finished all my internships, I didn't really have much to do anyway, back to Gap, back to the Gap. Like I was talking about the manager, I won't say any names in case anyone from Gap is watching, but you know, if you work there, you know, you know Yeah, he just seemed really nice initially and then when I was working, he just, just started changing. 
one thing that I noticed initially, I know a lot of people obviously when you have a new job, you get imposter syndrome, you feel like you shouldn't be there or you feel like everyone's looking at you like, what is she doing here? Like, who is she? And more times than not, people aren't actually thinking what you're thinking they're thinking. But with this company, they were thinking what I was thinking they were thinking. <laughs> Tongue twister, mate, thinking, flanking, flanking. But yeah, so they were very like, you know, at the end of the day, we're all in retail. I don't know why you're acting as if you're the manager of this whole, you're the CEO of Gap, or you work in the back of house teams, or the office. But they would really highlight their kind of authority. Is that the right word? Was it power? I don't know. They would really highlight that that they were, you know, the hierarchy. So their sales assistants are obviously at the bottom. And then they're like in the middle, at the top, at, you know. But they would highlight that they're above you, basically. So yeah, I'll highlight one incident which made me, started to piss me off about the job and just realised that this job is not for me and that I'm never going back into retail. It was basically a time where the manager, the guy I highlighted, the Can I talk with my mouth open? I mean, I do it anyway, so I don't know why I'm trying to be polite to YouTube. <laughs> and he, he, <laughs> Yeah, he was nice at first, and then event over time he just started to wind my buttons and push and push and push. Now I was never like a bad child at school. I would never get into arguments with teachers or have fights or none of that. And it was the same in the workplace. I'm very respectable. I'm very like respectable. I say, <laughs> and this guy just kept pushing and pushing and eventually it got to a point where I was like you know what I'm either gonna leave this job or I'm gonna get fired there's either that those were my paths those were my futures with this job there was one or the other and obviously you know which one happened so basically over time there was one occasion where I was on tills a customer asked me what size an item was because of for her son which was a specific so she asked me what's what size is for this specific age at the time I was maybe how many two weeks in or maybe less maybe more can't remember too much but I know I it was still recent it was probably like a week after I you know got taught the sizes and everything and I think the, just the moment she asked me kind of just slipped through my mind so she said, I think my son's in year seven or something. What size would he be? I didn't want to make it up because I was like, I'm, I didn't want to her end up getting the wrong size and be like, it was her, it's her who lied to me. So the person who was on tills next to me, I asked her, I was like, I was like, sorry, I'm unsure at the moment. Let me ask her. Yeah, I'm still new to the job. Let me just double check with her that it's, correct what I said she told me the size it was fine I told her she was like thank you no, no issue with the customer at this point and then after that transaction happened like I was still meant to be on tills this manager calls me over to the stock room starts shouting at me being like why did you ask you know what did you just do back then I was like what do you mean I asked for help like you guys said ask for help if I'm not sure of something I wasn't gonna lie to the customer that's even worse because she would have bought this I've been like it's too small you lied to me you don't even know your sizes and then he started carrying on having a go at me he was like do you have an issue do you have like a... I said you know I forgot sometimes you forget things it's natural it's normal like it's not something that's wow oh my day she forgot put her in prison and then he was like do you have a mental problem because i forgot the size of a bloody item and at that point i was very like i started to get heated up like you know when 
there's that emoji of the steam coming out of the face. That was me inside, like my, I felt my face getting warm because I was like, how can you say that over me forgetting the size of an item? I was like, how dare you ask me if I've got mental issue just because I forgot size once because for me you know mental health is not a joke to anyone it's not a joke you can't it's something that's personal as well not everyone's gonna speak on it immediately if they're facing something and the fact that he thought that was a, a good thing to say you know do, do I have a mental issue because I forgot the size it was seemed to me like he was kind of taking the piss because I didn't expect him to say that it kind of shocked me I was like how dare you you know I wish I had more courage back then to actually speak on how I felt but I kind of just brushed it past and just let it over time build up so when other things happened after that I would kind of just ignore him or give him a just give him a straight face or just walk past him or just do whatever for example the, it was just like a few weeks after this this customer's being really rude the queue there was like two of us on the queues at the time maybe three who knows and she initially she was nice she was with her husband they weren't from the uk they came over from tel aviv to i don't know i think they were just on holiday here spending some time here and I was like, oh, that's nice. She was like, yeah, I'm going back to Tel Aviv. So that's why she had all these. She brought like three bloody bags of baby clothes. I'm sorry, but I don't think any baby. Like, I folded it on the desk and then I put them in the back. So she literally saw each one as I folded it. Started complaining. She was like, you didn't do it. You don't, you're not folding it properly. I was like, am I not? I literally picked them out of the bag. I was like, is this not folded? No. And she was like, no. She was like, let me do it. I'm like, what do you mean, let me do it? We don't have all day. My manager came over. She was like, she's not folding it properly. She started getting rude. I was like, what? Like, what is going on? And at that point, even though, you know, sales assistants get um, treated like absolute rubbish all the time, I was like, I'm not having it anymore. I'm still human. Like, there's no reason for you to treat me with such disrespect because what well, I'm working a job and you're not at this moment in time and I was just also to that point I was really emotionally drained and mentally drained because I felt like this this job just didn't allow me to you know it wasn't nothing I was passionate about it was just being treated like rubbish every day not just from the customers but also from the team so eventually I just got to the breaking point and especially that day where that customer was absolutely horrible and I just thought at that time I was like I'm not doing anything wrong I didn't respond to her in a rude way you know I was speaking to her throughout it was nice and then she just started getting angry for no reason probably because she's stressed about her flight who knows and then my manager comes over and in a sense sticks up for her he's like oh let her fold them let her fold them and I was like what do you mean like so what am I just gonna stand here and wait as she folds the clothes that like, I've folded fine maybe she didn't I don't know she, she wanted some extra five-star service and then I was like and then he said go she told me to go to the side and I was like I'm not going to the side I'm leaving see you later and yeah because I was literally I get when I'm angry and frustrated I get emotional like I'll probably break down and cry so I could feel it coming because I was so angry so I just he told me to go to the side and I was like, you know, I haven't done anything wrong. I'm fed up of this job anyways. So I just walked off and he was like shouting my name. But I just went upstairs to the toilets, had a cry, came back down, cried some more. And he didn't, he was just like, this is me. And I, the fact that I believe until now, I believe I tried my best at that time. I tried my best to work this job. I tried my ultimate best. Like I really did. I put maximum effort in every time. I always spoke to customers on the shop floor. Even though my manager would be like, oh, speak to her. I was like, I've already spoken to her. She doesn't want help. Do you want me to harass them? And then eventually, um, you know, cause we were on probation until August, I think it was. 
or this or that, or something like that. We were on probation, and halfway through our probation, we have like a review to see if we're working fine, to see how we're finding the job, but also to get feedback into how the managers think we're performing, and etc. etc. And then obviously from that review, they would see whether you know we go on to have this as our part-time, full part-time job, or if they want to withdraw our probation and not let us work further. It, you know, it's that testing period. But yeah, at this point in my head, anyways, I was like, I don't want to work past probation. Like when probation ends, I will 100% leave because this job has not done anything for, for me and I can't be except for cause me stress, cause me emotional distress and you know I'm probably also moody because I have not enough sleep but that's my own issue. I'll put my hands on that one but my probation came I had a re the review with not the guy who did my interview this other guy he was like how would you think you're performing I was like you know what I think I'm doing all right I think, you know, just jogging it, I've been working, I've been playing my part, I've tried to go above and beyond, I've tried to, you know, do the best I can, so I was like, it's fine, he, and then he goes, people have been observing you on the shop floor and have been saying, you're not working hard enough, so at the end of the day, we're gonna, um, we're just, if this carries on, we're gonna review and you know come to a conclusion and I was like what Ooh. and I just didn't understand that because like I said I thought I was working my hardest I was doing everything I was told I was trying to go and do more as well but then when that was said I was like you know what literally I'm trying my hardest and no matter how hard I try I'm these managers are just plotting against me and just maybe they just didn't want me to work there i didn't want to work there anyways but you know sometimes when you've got to get a job you've got to get a job one day it was actually quite unexpected i mean i've had a feeling more than not that i was gonna get fired like i had a feeling it was coming soon like it was on the horizon <laughs> and i didn't mind it literally i was embracing myself for it and one day i got this like email saying that i'm gonna have this meeting and this email was like proper formal like there's gonna be um, someone in the room taking notes and I was like they said you can bring a witness as well I was like what happened did I steal am I being taken to court like at the time that's the things were going on in my head I was like did I accidentally steal a coin from the cash point what happened like I literally thought because it was such a serious email I was like I think I'm getting arrested for something I don't even know I did but they called me while I was working up to the shop floor brought all my stuff with me I mean all my stuff was in this clinic room on the top floor anyways they basically sat me down asked me a few questions about my behavior during my time at Gap being like how has this been how has that been do you it was like I was at school like that's what it literally reminded me of like you know when you're in detention or you're in the head teacher's office or you're in some teacher's office and they're asking you questions about your behavior because you've done something wrong and it's like they ask me all of this they were asking me like you've been late a few times do you think that's acceptable i mean because i didn't want to dispute it i said no it's not acceptable it was literally like no yes no they're like do you think you have put all your maximum effort in working no i mean yes do you think you've tried your best yes no yes no yes do you think coming on time is part of the company's values which you have not adhered to every time no yes no yes and yeah the last question i think that's what made him 
terminate my probation because he asked me is there anything else is there any support that you think the company could provide you and for me because at that time I thought I knew that the issue was bigger than the company itself it was the fact that I wasn't committed to having a kind of retail job at the moment because of the way the retail industry is as a sales assistant just get treated absolutely trash it wasn't a desire of mine to be in retail so mentally I just couldn't cope I couldn't stick through it and I couldn't endure that um, trial in my life so I was like no there's no literally no, nothing the company could do to make me want to work here or work in retail like that was when I had the realization that even if I don't have to have a job for a while like it's worth not going back into retail because that mentally affected me it wasn't just about the money like okay I can earn money in a job well done but for me at that point it was like no matter how much money I earn doing this job if I don't want to do it I'm not going to do it and from day, that day forward I think I've been more disciplined with opportunities and jobs because I've been like I'm not going back into retail because literally home wasn't far away I was like I'm going home mate forget me I was like goodbye I was like okay thank you I'm gonna leave goodbye peace out yeah I left and that that chapter was closed I remember going downstairs taking off my lanyard chucking it in the bin it was it was weird because even though this word getting fired sounds like a big bad word but it was actually one of the best things that happened to me getting fired from my job so <coughs> so there's like a bit of bread stuff So yeah, I hope you enjoyed that story time. Don't accept, don't settle. If you don't want to be in a job, work your ass off so that you can be in a job that you want to do or that you find opportunities that you want to find. For me, looking back now, even though I haven't had like a job for a while, I've still had different ways of earning money on the side, like Depop, even though that's not constant like depop vintage just selling old clothes eventually i do want to become a seller and start sourcing different items from different sites going out myself and doing that i know so much more opportunities that i can find and i can make whilst also earning from them the certain opportunities that i will speak on later i just can't right now that have helped me get a little bit of money as well obviously i'm not saying just just because of that one experience i've had now that every job i'm gonna find is gonna be perfect it's trial and error it's just life you're gonna find things you do like you're gonna find things you don't like and that's the beauty of life i'm gonna end this video here because i think that's a nice note to leave it on and i think it's been a bit long but i hope you enjoyed the story time thank you for watching if you're new please please click the subscribe button leave a like show me you like me <laughs> by leaving a like leave a comment below of what you think about that um and if you've been fired yourself let's make a fired group <laughs> fired group and yeah thank you for watching i have so much videos in store for you guys so many content that i haven't yet edited but will come out soon love you all have the best week ahead and i will see you in the next video goodbye